Conversations from the Cave is a raw self-help podcast dedicated to discussing men's issues. From pornography to parenting, from religion to real life, from learning to loving, we discuss the real issues that affect real men every day. Join us each week for powerful, revealing Conversations from the Cave. Now your host, Kurt Kennedy. We're live. This is Conversations from the Cave. I'm your host, Kirk Kennedy. It's a pleasure having each of you tune in today. We're doing a live show from RV South Parkway. We are taking some time to discuss a very deep issue, the issue of depression. Uh, depression in men is a unique issue in that uh, men deal with depression much more internally than do women. Women tend to talk in groups, whereas men tend to deal with depression in isolation. So today we're going to be joined in um, in our favorite uh, little cave. <laughs> we've got B.A. with us sitting across from me here at the table. We've also we've got Fly Mickey, uh, a special guest who's sitting in with us today on our podcast. It's unique in that uh, we've had some fairly bad weather, so we are actually uh, flying a little bit uh, with a smaller crew today. But we're excited for those of you who tune in each and every week to our podcast. So today's topic is going to be the topic of depression in men. And uh, B.A., you said that you're an overcomer and dealing with uh, some of these issues even even, even now, perhaps. You want to go ahead and uh, uh, start us off then and share a little bit of your of your story and, and your journey? We are live, y'all. Uh, that was a horn. <laughs> Somebody honking really loud outside. But as I said, this is B.A. here. Um, Changing lives one way, one word at a time. And I just want to talk about depression in the way of just, um, as you think about it, it is a, a mindset that just draws you into everything that can hurt you, that can make you sad. I mean, anguish, um, anger, uh, regret, guilt. Um, it wasn't fun when I was younger, um, and that's uh, why, as uh, Kurt was talking, we talked a brief moment uh, before we started the show about depression, and I'm kind of excited because um, my depression was, I got put on the drugs. I got put on a, a drug called amipramine, and, you know, it cal- helped me keep energy, but it, it had no real help for me. It just keeping my mind, you know, level and trying to keep me excited, and that's not where I wanted to be. So I kept looking and searching. I mean... Were you a believer at this time? Dealing, when you were initially dealing with depression, were you... I was not a believer when I was dealing with depression. Mm -hmm. I've I've had some ideas of God and, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. had some moments of where, oh, there is a God, you know, but Mm -hmm. the biggest thing is that... So let me ask you this. When, when, you know, a lot of people deal with um, depression... And it's it's basically called uh, anger turned inward. So there is anger that isn't directed at a target; it's directed inward. So a lot of times, um, frustration and anger is at the root of depression. And then instead of lashing out, it, it's internal internalized. For guys, this can be, I think, uh, particularly difficult because. Uh, we have to maintain a level of, of uh, self-control, or we're expected to have a level of self-control, which would not be typical. You know, we, you know, we have to we have to act in a, in a way that is respectable. So, a lot of times, we don't have the uh, the opportunity to just break down and start crying when we're upset about something. We don't have the opportunity to just you know blurt out. And uh, I think women in our society have a little bit more latitude in terms of being able to express their emotions, and we give them that latitude to be able to lash out and they can scream and yell and throw stuff and and, and we don't see that as being irrational Uh, whereas men have to be more comported and more composed so one of the things I wanted to ask you is because you've had a journey where there's been some uh, you know abuse there's been some times of difficulty um, did you find that your could you locate where your anger stemmed from was that unforgiveness to in the past or was that Something that, you know, um, you, you, just more difficult to get over? Well, in the past, um, as you were talking about, yes, I mean, I was angry to the fact that, you know, um, literally, and I do not suggest this, even if there's kids listening, but 
uh, at the point my parents were putting me, because first of all, I had to be in a mental hospital. Yes, that was some other things I did that got me there, but I literally looked at my parents and said, if they put me in there, I will hate you forever. Um, and that was just me, the teenager in me, and not wanting to go someplace uncomfortable, someplace I didn't know, and I wouldn't have anybody, friends or anything there. Mm-hmm. And it was scary. Um, it's just like God's always working and using you in every area, and that's where my life started growing and changing. But as I got in my teens, you know, I'm living at this children's home. So uh, clearly there's a lot of emotion there. Um, uh, Mickey, Mickey Free, we're going to bring you into the discussion. Uh, let's talk a little bit about depression and how, it, you know, what issues do you think um, you face or have faced going through the issue of depression? Well, for me, um, I link depression a lot of times um, to, you know, choices you make in life. You know, as you're living your life and you can identify with choices, that bad choices that you've been making. And and you, re- you realize that the bad choices that you're making and, and then you identify them and stop them. And sometimes you still get depressed. I, I battle um, bipolarism. And... Um, I too come from a background of mental hospitalizations and um, background. Yeah, going through that whole experience. So, have you? How has your faith? Um, I know that medication is important sometimes in these things, but how has your faith played a role in helping you to um, get through depression? Um, just you know, being able to understand that God's got you placed with the realm of people that you need to be placed with for a certain reason. You know, I, I go through Wellstone Mental Health Center and I go through the ACT team and, you know, at first I, did, I was opposed to the fact because, like, I had a 50-50 call or view on medicine because, like, I've seen, like, I used to believe that, you know, some doctors would just, you know, give anybody anything and they would over-medicate and, you know, make you numb to life and... And you wanted to live life. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the balance, you know, one of the things that you, you talk about with depression is that a lot of people don't want to be on meds. They don't want to be on the um, intervention plans and things like that. So there's, there's, there's that step. But then the second part of it is how do you still enjoy your life once you've gotten, you're going through those challenges so as not to end up, you know, being numb to life. And I like that, that phrase, numb to life. And I think... I think a lot of people uh, dealing with depression are just numb to life, even without meds. They're just they, they go through life just numb. Um, so how did you how did you incorporate your faith as you uh, went through that? Did you start going to church? Did you start finding a relationship with Jesus Christ? What happened? Um, I got radically changed. Um, like I said, I was, uh, I went through alcoholism and cocaineism and that you know, was part of my bad choices that I realized was making me depressed. And as God drew me away from that, and, you know, I surrendered. So you had to give up, you had to give up narcotics and, and that kind of thing. So that must have been a real, I mean, that, that actually has a physical effect on the body as yes. well, because those are, those are stimulants, you know. Yes. Um, so, so did you have to go through detox first, and then after detox, then step by step, or did you kind of have a come to Jesus moment and everything dropped away? What happened? Um, it was a gradual come to Jesus. I, ha- I had to be shown that tough love from my brother who believed what the Bible said about not being unevenly yoked. So at that point in my life, um, my sister took me in. And growing up, see, my brother and I, we grew up real close. Our birthdays were March 18th and March 19th. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we hung out together real close. And I had a sister, but I really didn't get to know her until, until about my 20s, which... It was essentially when I found Jesus in uh, 2007, or should I say when Jesus really radically transformed my life. Mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. 2007, when I got the circumcised heart, he just I felt him reach down and just touch my heart. And then I was filled with the joy of the Lord, and I just had this holy fire that just wanted for me to just spread the joy of the Lord to everybody and anybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, Amen. you know, and, and that was a beautiful thing. And um, I did... I did relapse a couple of times, um, but, you know... It's part of the journey. It's an expected part of the journey it, to have some relapse from time to time. Now, did you relapse on the drug part or relapse in the depression part? Because a lot of times people use drugs to deal with the depression. Right. Yeah. Right. So was it both or... 
it was, it was a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, when you trying to get medicated and you choose to use alcohol and, and right. illegal drugs with, um, prescribed medication that is supposed to be, you know, getting your levels, your, um, your mind back to, it's your, your, your chemical levels, and, yeah, your chemical levels back in the brain. Probably. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not a good mix. So you don't want to do that. You want to take it as prescribed and, and, uh, so if you, if you mix them, you know, it's not, not good. Right. So you dealt with uh, <laughs> chemical addiction, which you used to self-medicate. So right. you were basically on a med, but then you kind of needed a little something. So you got, you know, got into that. When you talk, there are a lot of people out there who are listening and want to know, you know, was, was the relationship with Jesus Christ, was it all of a sudden just flowers and roses or was there a still a very rigorous journey? I mean, because wow. a lot of people, a lot of people think, well, the moment you, ah, oh, they're ringing the bell at Arby's. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a lot of people think that just because you, you have a relationship with God that you're, you know, somehow you're going to just walk on the golden streets and, and there's no more trouble. And you hear these stories about people, you know, I don't, I haven't drunk, I didn't drink another drink in 20 years since I found Jesus. Well, that, that doesn't happen to everybody. Right? right. And you talked about it very realistically by saying, you know, hey, you know, this is a journey. This is something that's a step by step. I see you, you know, nodding as well, uh, BA. Mm -hmm. Uh, so to talk about that journey. I mean, yes. either of you guys. I would say it's definitely a journey. Um, I'd like to share a joke I heard one time. Um, this is very ironic to, to this question. Um, I heard this joke one time that was like, what's the difference between, uh, when you're baptized between after you get out of the baptism of water and when between when you go in and when you get out you go in a, a dry center and come out a wet one <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> so much, that yeah. just goes to show you know we're not going to be perfected you know it's, yeah. it is a journey yeah. we're going to have our hurts and struggles and you know you can even be depressed you know just because you know the devil wants to attack you and you have hardships and and, and this walk is not just you know, uh, and I, I think that's another thing that I, I like that you put out there was this notion that it's a, it's sometimes it can be a struggle. Sometimes, it, you know, they're living a Christian life doesn't mean you're perfect. Mm -hmm. It means that there's someone who was perfect who covers you. And Amen. I think that there's a power in that understanding that we aren't, we never hold ourselves out to be perfect. And I like the honesty that you guys have both shared that, you know, first of all, depression is real. It's not just real outside the church. It's, it, it's real in the lives of people who profess to be believers. That, you know, you get depressed. You know, there are times when it can be, you know, needing medication. That's the other thing that I want to talk about. Both of you guys have talked about the need for mm -hmm. medication. And, you know, if, if you are a listener who's struggling with uh, depression and it's not going away after a few days and you're constantly down, constantly thinking harmful thoughts, by all means, by all means, get intervention and medical help. You know, that be, beyond anything else, if we don't have anything else that we want to say, get some medical help. Your, your life is worth something. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times people, when they're going through the issues of depression, they don't value their own life. And it's hard. It's really, really, really hard when you don't feel like your life is worth something. And anger and pain a lot of times can make a person feel devalued. And, and it's Jesus Christ that gives the value. And then secondarily, we push through those things day by day, walking in our, in our faith. Okay, go, uh, I see you chomping at the uh, bit. Well, you wanted, wanted to say a few things. Go my ahead. mind is uh, spinning right now on the, the topic we're, we're, we're just talking about and um, the idea of depression. And um, <clears throat> I was trying to think of <clears throat> in, in uh, Scripture, uh, because that's where you got to go, is the Bible. And I, I ask if you are dealing with any of these is issues of anger or whatever, Go find a Bible, and if you don't understand the Bible, ask a person who does. I'll have them walk through it with you, because there are stories in there all about men who had to battle with anger. I mean, I can't say or guarantee that there was depression, but there was everything that. Oh we yeah, there were actually today. was. The story of Elijah is a prime example of depression. Um, yeah, the prophet Elijah um, has suffered twice. The Bible actually talks about the fact that. Um, the angels of heaven ministered to him because he had worn himself out after the mountaintop experience with uh, with some of you uh, don't read scripture so I, I don't want to go too deep into the story but right after this great miraculous act of God where um, uh, Elijah stood between the, the false prophets and the one true God uh, 
right after that, uh, he went into a very deep depression because he thought that the queen, who, who he showed up, was going to kill him. And he even bemoaned and, and complained to God that, you know, he was the only one who believed in